Israel's banning of the UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees has been condemned worldwide. The United Nations Secretary General has written to the Israeli Prime Minister about the ban on UNRWA. Gabriel Alessandro is at UN headquarters in New York with more details. We are told that UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez sent a letter to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu outlining his grave concerns about this Israeli parliament legislation that would essentially ban UNRWA. And in his daily briefing to journalists here at headquarters, the spokesperson made it clear that if UNRWA was banned, it would have devastating consequences on the humanitarian situation for millions of Palestinians. There is a humanitarian organization called UNRWA that was created by the uh, General Assembly to provide humanitarian assistance until such a time that a political solution could be found. There is no political solution currently. We keep hoping for one. Doesn't seem like there's one on the horizon. Our point is that UNRWA needs to continue to do its work. If the law is implemented, implemented in the way that the Knesset has decided, is there a way you can imagine that UNRWA still can at least partly go on with their work? No. The new laws are scheduled to go into effect in 90 days, so the clock is ticking for the UN to figure out how to respond. One idea is for the UN to pressure Israel not to implement the new laws, which might be the best case scenario, but would still leave UNRWA in a precarious position trying to carry out its mandate. Gabriel Ozondo, Al Jazeera, at the United Nations in New York. We're joined now by Sam Rose. He's the Senior Deputy Director of UNRWA Affairs in Gaza and joins us live from Khan Yunis. Good to have you with us. A lot of focus on the north right now between the latest bombings, Beit Lahia, the siege, the starvation. Is the population of northern Gaza being eliminated? Yeah, thanks for having me on. I mean, catastrophic scenes in northern Gaza, absolutely relentless attacks, populations, civilians in the most awful of, of conditions under bombardment in, in Jabalia and, and, and as we've seen populations who have fled, fled to, to Beit Lahia have been uh, themselves bombed. So absolutely desperate conditions. I mean, really difficult for us to know precisely what's going on, given the intensity of, of the fighting and given our lack of, of access. But it's just, I mean, it, it's horrific. It's incident after incident after incident being meted out on, on, on a population that's, that's on its knees, that's been enduring this for close Sam, to... Sam, if, I, to, if to I may jump in, you said, given our lack of access, when's the last time you tried to access northern Lebanon and what happened, and northern Gaza, I should say, and what happened? We've been able to get through the, the Wadi Gaza checkpoint, which separates areas north of, of Gaza City from, from the rest of Gaza, but, but most of those missions have only been able to get into, into Gaza City. They've not been able to get north of Gaza City, which where this siege, which where this intense military operation is is is, is taking place. There have been a couple of, of successful why, why is missions. That, Sam, were you denied permission? Yeah, we're denied permission routinely to bring in bring in supplies, bring in goods. There was a, a successful effort to resupply one of the hospitals in, in northern Gaza and, and medevac uh, a, a few desperately sick, sick patients to another location. So there have been a couple of successful missions to hospitals in, in northern Gaza. But our ability to provide services there is, is essentially nil. The water wells that we as UNRWA run have been uh, have stopped civil defense is no longer working efforts and, and missions to retrieve bodies and and trap people from underneath rubble have also been denied in the in the past uh, past several days as well what reason do the israelis give you when they deny your request for for access we're not typically given a, a reason we're told that it's not possible to facilitate the mission for operational 
reasons, and then and then we we, we try again. The acting Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs at the United Nations has said the entire population of North Gaza is at risk of dying. And I'm wondering, how close are we to seeing, God forbid, that kind of scenario? Is it a matter of months, weeks, or, or even less than that? I mean, look, we've got a population that has been on the verge of famine, on the verge of catastrophic food insecurity for for months now. People are already dying. Over 43,000 people killed, over 100,000 injured now. We're, we're, we're reaching close to the point where 10% of the population of Gaza has either been killed or injured in this this conflict. And, and it's inevitable what will happen eventually if you're not able to bring in these supplies. We've seen the re-emergence of infectious diseases after 25 years of eradication. Polio is still circulating in the Gaza Strip. We've yet to complete the second round of that polio vaccination campaign. So yes, we, we, we will see it. And we do have the capacity to, to stop this if we throw all the resources of the humanitarian system at it. And if we do that now, right. but for people here, it just seems that the, the world's capacity to tolerate the suffering of Palestinians is, is infinite. Uh, uh, briefly, your response to that bill passed in the Israeli Knesset to ban UNRWA. Is there any way for you to get around that, to work through other agencies, to coordinate indirectly, or is, are we potentially looking at the end of UNRWA in Palestine? We could well be if these bills are implemented to the letter. There are no other organizations who can take on, on, on the load that, that UNRWA has been performing over the past 75 years. The Perhaps the most successful development endeavor of the United Nations across uh, the Middle East region in the past 75 years. Several generations of Palestinians educated in UNRWA schools, millions of children. We're providing five million patient consultations in our health clinics every year in Gaza. No other organization is set up to do that. No other organization has the staff, has the systems, has the uh, the contacts and the wherewithal and the understanding of what's, uh, of what's happening on the ground here apart from UNRWA. Sam Rose there, thank you so much. Thank you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.